Life Audio. Welcome back to Sparkle Speak. I'm your host, Catherine, and this is a podcast sponsored by Sparkle, a women's ministry with the purpose of connecting women through inspiration and encouragement. This week, we have on our very special guest, Deirdre Eberly. Deirdre is a good friend of mine. We were involved in the same Christian organization in college, and so I very much enjoyed getting to catch up with her. Deirdre lives in Michigan, currently with her husband and son, and they work for the same ministry organization that we were all a part of. On this episode, we talk about performance mentality versus being saved by grace and grace alone. We also dive a bit further into her struggles with depression while she was living overseas and what that taught her about the Lord and mental health. I just know you're going to love hearing from Deirdre after a few words from our sponsors, so please enjoy. Amen. Awesome. Oh, remind me afterwards, like after, I know we say goodbye or whatever, but then afterwards I... Uh, I got to listen to one of them and it was so encouraging. So I just wanted to tell you about that. After. Cool. Yeah. Let me know. Okay. okay. Sounds good. Sorry. I'll let you do your thing. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, Deirdre, I'm so glad to have you on with us today. And we're going to start off asking the question we ask everyone first mm-hmm. and foremost. And so that question is, when did you first start identifying yourself as a Christian and how did you come to know God? Totally. Um, well, it's so good to connect. I'm really glad we get to do this. Um Yay. But yeah, I would say that um, I grew up uh, learning and and knowing and hearing of Jesus um, through my parents, uh, through church. Uh, My parents actually work in ministry, so I feel like just being around that a lot was impactful for me. Um, But I was totally that kid that would like, uh, we'd be coming back from living overseas, coming back to the States, and we'd be visiting churches and uh, they'd be talking about inviting Jesus into your heart. And I would always, again and again, like continue to ask him in. Um, cause I wanted to make sure I did it right, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I feel like my relationship with God really ebbed and flowed from my childhood up until college. Um, kind of like two common threads that I've seen when I look back on that season, um, was just either kind of like pushing, um, God to the side of my life and not really wanting much to do with him. Um, or, um, really wanting to connect with him. Um, but doing it out of performance and wanting to be good enough for him. Um, so yeah, I'd say through, um, a series of seasons and events, I really feel like he drew me in into a deeper understanding of like what a relationship with him actually meant. Um, and yeah, just, uh, over a series of time. And so I'd say one of the biggest ones was, um, we were living in the States and my parents, uh, felt led to move us back overseas, uh, to the Middle East and, I had just been experiencing so much transition um, that I just really felt confused and alone and just kind of like, what's happening, you know? And I feel like the Lord really used that um, to start to solidify like that Jesus um, is so near to us and that he's our friend. Um, And I think that kind of started a personal like, okay, I wanna explore this more, um, what it it means to connect with him. So that led into college, uh, coming to Michigan State. Um, Yeah, I was at a more, I would say, stronger spot where I was like, okay, I think I do want to pursue this. Um, But I was such a people pleaser that I was kind of like, okay, this could kind of go either either way, right? Like, depending on the type of people um, I get connected with, um, involved with, like, do I really want to pursue my faith? Or do I kind of, again, want this thing to be more on the side? Um, but yeah, I got involved in a campus ministry at Michigan state, uh, called crew. And I feel like God really used that, um, to help me like not be ashamed of being a Christian of wanting to identify with Jesus. Um, and it's really where I started to engage in like, Hey, how do I read the Bible? What does it look like to pray and to really, um, connect with him. And so, yeah, up, up to that point, I feel like the Lord really grew this, idea that, okay, yeah, I can have this relationship with him. Um, I don't need to be ashamed of a relationship with Jesus. Um, But I think there was still this like performance route that was still there in me that I I didn't fully understand. Um, And that really kind of came to a a peak my junior year of college Um, is ironic because I'm like leading Bible study and (laughs) connecting with girls, Um, but just started to walk through a hard season and started to question like, do I really get this? Like, I I know the gospel, like I could communicate it, but like, 
do I get this at a heart level? Like I was really kind of wrestling with that. Um, and so I remember God using like a couple verses to really um, take the head knowledge and make it something strong in my heart. So I'll just open up to the verses I thought of really quick. Um, the first one is Hebrews, which I love Hebrews, but uh, chapter 10, 11 through 14 says, um, and every priest stands daily at his service, offering repeatedly the same sacrifices, which can never take away sins. But when Christ had offered for all time a single sacrifice for sins, he sat down at the right hand of God, waiting from that time until his enemies should be made a footstool for his feet. For by a single offering, he is perfected for all time those who are being sanctified. Um, and I just remember that like sticking out to me, like, do these priests every day have to like make sacrifices and it still can't solve the problem. And um, I think it finally clicked for me, like my spiritual resume, everything I try to do to like earn God's love, like will never be enough. And um, although that sounds discouraging or disappointing, it was actually really freeing to be like, okay, like I can't, I can't do this on my own. And so um, that really kind of, um, yeah, brought that point to my attention. And um, then Ephesians 2, 8 through 9, where it talks about, um, I'll just flip that one really quick too, where it talks about, um, for by grace, you've been saved through faith, uh, not by your own doing. It's the gift of God, not by uh, work so that no one can boast. And uh, I remember like sitting in this parking lot in my car and reading that verse and being like, I've read this so many times, but it just clicked. And it was that classic, like, I'm crying in the car by myself. Like, God's grace is real, you know, like mm -hmm. he, he loves us so much and it's not based on anything we bring to the table. And so, um, yeah, it's funny to think back on my journey because I'm like, you know, I can't remember a day growing up where I didn't know about, about Jesus or know about what he did for me, but I really think that God had to kind of take me on a journey, you know, through high school and college, um, to really, um, yeah, make that more real. And so I think that was a huge pivotal point in my life where I finally kind of learned like, yeah, grace, his grace is sufficient. And that um, is really what we cling to as people who believe in Jesus. So. Yeah, I think that's so, um, I I'm just glad you brought up the performance um, mm -hmm. aspect of things. Cause that's actually something we haven't really talked about much on this podcast with our different sure. guests we've had so far. And so I really like that you brought that up because it is so true. Sometimes we think it's like, if we just do all these things and check all these boxes, then we can measure up and earn it, our mm -hmm. faith or not earn our faith, but like earn our love from God. And it's like, yeah. it's just so opposite of what the Bible is actually saying. And I remember, totally. um, I think I learned this in crew in our crew days, yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> the ministry we're both a part of, but, um, it was like, there's like three cups of water mm. and like, if you put one drop of dye into one cup and then like mm -hmm. 10 drops of dye into another cup, they're both dirty. Like, yeah, totally. they're both ugly. So we tend to measure each other's sins. Like we say, yep. well, this person sins more than this person. So this person's better, but really in God's eyes, it's all the same. Like sin mm -hmm. is sin and it makes us like imperfect, sinful people and broken people. And the only cup that's ever clean out there is Jesus's cup because he yeah. is, he was sinless and he is perfect. And so none of us can ever measure up unless we actually like seek him as our saving grace and seek his living water to be replace our own. Yeah. Um, so yeah, totally. your story just so reminded me of that. Right? Totally. I feel like it's so exhausting, right? Too, when you continue to try and try, like um, I just think he really wants to free us from that. So yeah, mm -hmm. you know. definitely. Yeah. And I would love to hear, so thanks for sharing like kind of your past and kind of, you know, what he's done in your, your life in the past, yeah. but maybe more currently, like, have there been experiences that have helped shape your view of God or change your view of God along the way? Or have there been like specific defining moments that have really like defined your faith journey at this point? Yeah, totally. Yeah, it was kind of fun thinking through that question when you sent that to me. Um, I think a season that I, I think of where God did a lot of work in my life um, was actually back in 2015 and 16. Um, so Rob and I had just been married like six months um, and we were heading over to the Middle East to be part of, um, yeah, a launch team doing campus ministry. 
um, at a university. Um, and honestly, it was like my dream situation. Um, you know, I had this new husband. Um, I was moving to this beautiful city um, that I actually had grown up in. Um, so it was fun to return there. My parents still live there. Um, it was our first time kind of diving into full-time ministry. And we were heading over there with this team of like awesome dear friends of ours. So honestly, it was like the dream situation. Um, <clears throat> but about like two or three days after we arrived, um, I had, I started to have these like intense panic attacks and just started to wrestle with really bad anxiety. Um, and as it continued to kind of play itself out, um, I was wrestling with like, man, why am I, I why am I so anxious? Like if I have this much fear, this must much mean, must mean, sorry, um, that I like somehow lack faith in God. Mm -hmm. Um, and then it started to kind of make me ask a lot of faith questions and kind of feel like, man, is, is this all real? Like, is my relationship with God secure? Um, Jesus is really God, right? Like I'm having all these like kind of faith crisis mm -hmm. questions. Mm -hmm. Um, and I'm like, man, I'm, I'm here to be a part of ministry. Like I'm, I'm wrestling with these questions. Should, should Christians even have questions? Um, and that kind of led me into the season of depression. And so, um, yeah, it was just a, a dark season that I wasn't anticipating. Um, we kind of joked that we thought like Rob would have a hard time moving overseas because he hadn't lived over there, but it was really me that kind of tanked and was struggling. Um, and I just remember, uh, you know, every day we'd be going on campus trying to interact with students and uh, talk about Jesus. And um, I'm there trying to talk about this, but I'm like, is this all real? Like, do I believe yeah. this? You know, which was so intimidating. Um, and at the same time, I just remember like scouring the scriptures being like, hey, God, I know this is true. Your word is truth, but everything's falling flat. And um, I need to hear from you, but I'm, I'm continuing to read this and just nothing is um, is speaking to me. I just was really wrestling, um, which made it even harder to go back, right. To keep reading and to keep reading. But I knew that's what I needed to do, you know, just keep, keep clinging to the Lord. Um, and I didn't even mention this, but I was supposed to be like the team leader of our team this year. And, um, so I'm like, God, what's happening? You know, like, mm -hmm. this is not what I expected. Um, but yeah, so it was just a rough, a rough fall with really walking through that anxiety and depression and new into marriage and, um, and a lot of change. Um, and really God used several different things in my life. Um, during that season, our, our community, um, a really good counselor, um, for me personally, medication was a huge thing and helping me get kind of like a baseline to deal with some of that stuff. Um, but yeah, I look back on that year, um, and I remember it being, yeah, one of my darkest seasons. Um, but honestly, I also look back and I just think it's one of the most beautiful times of my life where God taught me, um, yeah, so much about himself and about myself. Um, and yeah, there were a couple like defining things. I feel like truths that he helped me learn um, in that season. And one of the first ones was just like learning to hold fast to truth. <laughs> um, I remember someone talking to me during that season and they um, had a son who was also really wrestling with some questions spiritually. And I remember her telling me like, you might be tempted to go look out beyond, you know, for these answers out in the world. Um, but you're not going to find it there. Like keep, keep running to Jesus, keep looking to him. And I really found that to be true. Like, yeah, I needed just to cling to his word, keep going to it when it felt flat. And it felt like I wasn't understanding or, or hearing from him. Um, and also to keep speaking about the truth of the gospel when I wasn't feeling it or when I was wrestling, you know, like mm -hmm. I really think even verbally communicating it, um, it was a way to preach to myself. Like this is true, even um, when I'm wrestling to believe it. Um, and I, I think another huge uh, lesson learned from that was just that like God is the one that keeps us, like that it's not the strength of our faith. And um there's this quote by Charles Spurgeon. It says, um, my faith rests not upon what I am or shall be or feel or know, but in what Christ is and what he has done and in what he is now doing for me. And that was just such a like light bulb moment of like, okay, like he's the author of faith, you know, it's, 
I'm not the one who created it. And he's the one that's going to sustain our faith. Um, even in seasons where we're questioning or doubting, um, that we can just continue to look to him. Um, I think I learned a lot about vulnerability. <laughs> like as mm -hmm. a leader, I wasn't really wanting to start out my year in that way. Um, but I honestly like couldn't even try to be put together. <laughs> um, and um, it was through our team that I just experienced some like the richest community and um, yeah, just uh, fellowship ever and seeing them encourage me and walk alongside me, point me to truth. Sometimes just I'd be sitting on their couch, just getting to be uh, in the presence with other people. Um, yeah, and just really getting to kind of set the tone of even like, okay, we can be real with each other, you know, and, and carry the loads together. Um, and then I think the last thing that season really taught me um, was just how you can have everything you hope for. Like I said earlier, like it really was my dream uh, situation, you know, um, but really like what we need most is, is Jesus and, and only Jesus. And um, a verse that I kind of cling to uh, it kind of has felt like a life verse for me is John 6, 68, where, um, you know, a lot of people left Jesus. And he asked his disciples, like, are you going to go away too? Um, I think it's Peter that says, like, Lord, where else will we go? You have the words of eternal life. And so I think, yeah, he just used that season to be like, man, there's really no other place to go. Like, he's, he's what we're looking for, and he's where eternal life is. And so, yeah, I look back on that season really fondly, even though we laughed because it was so hard. Um, beginning of marriage. but. Um, yeah, I feel like the Lord just taught me so much um, that continues to impact maybe just how I think or how I live and how I want to live. So, yeah, that, thanks for sharing all that and for being vulnerable to share it. Yeah, um, totally. I think a lot of people can relate. And I think especially like when you're in the midst of a hard season, mm -hmm. it is so hard to see it as something that's going to turn out yeah. beautiful and something that's actually going to be for our benefit you know like the bible talks about consider it joy when we go through trials because your yeah. faith is being refined and it's going to produce perseverance and endurance mm -hmm. and all these things and it's like in the moment though it's so hard and yeah. so it's great just hearing you know other people's stories of like you know you're going to get to the other side and it's yeah. going to happen again but there's beauty that comes from from it so totally sharing that yeah no for sure for sure. I really do feel like it was people that even spoke into that dark season being like, oh, there was this imagery that um, someone on our team would talk about, like the sun is above the clouds, you know, like we don't see it and just needed other people to continue to remind me of that. Cause yeah, sometimes it's hard to see in the moment. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And there was another analogy I heard of too, when someone was kind of talking about something similar with like their faith, like they were just questioning their faith and they were like, yeah. why am I questioning this when I, you know, yesterday I believed so strongly, like this doesn't even mm -hmm. make any sense. But someone was saying that like, sometimes our faith is like a chair and like, it feels like the legs just get like broken off of it. And it's like, mm. what? But when they get rebuilt and when we go through that process of rebuilding it, like sometimes the legs get screwed on even tighter and stronger. And mm, so it's like, yeah, sometimes we awesome. just have to allow that to happen and, and kind of let our legs get ripped off from underneath us. And mm -hmm. then once it gets rebuilt, it's even stronger and more beautiful at the end. Totally. No. For sure. Yeah. So I love that. Um, well, just the last thing I'd love to hear, like, do you have any favorite verses or scripture or things that you've been learning lately that you could share with us? Totally. Yeah. Um, I feel like lately, um, I mean, I've just been enjoying, I feel like the Lord has been, um, just teaching me to enjoy like his word and his presence. <laughs> um, I've been doing like a Bible reading plan, um, which I highly re recommend. I mean, I feel like I don't, I don't worry about the dates or needing to be like a stickler on, yeah, getting through it at a certain pace. But I think, um, I mean, you know, like with having a kids now too, I think I just need to know like today, this is exactly what I'm reading versus trying to figure it out. And so, mm -hmm. um, yeah, this Bible reading plan has me in a couple different places, but, um, it was funny. I was, I'm at the point kind of an exodus where you're learning all the details about the tabernacle and the ark. And sometimes mm -hmm. I'm like, oh my word, this is so much detail, you know, yeah. like more than you would get in like 
a furniture kit from Ikea or something. Like, I'm just like, <laughs> how, how do I keep up with all this? Um, and kind of like, why is this all in here? Um, but it's been really cool to read at the same time because it's like, wow, like all this detail is, is included in here because this was so important. This was like the presence of God that was going to be dwelling with the Israelites. Like, um, this was really significant. Um, and at the same time that I'm reading in the new Testament, um, in the gospels and you're seeing like God came down in human form, you know, and Jesus is there in the flesh and just getting to see those parallels of, of God's presence with them. Um, God's presence on earth with us through Christ. And then that he gives us his Holy spirit. So yeah, I don't know. I feel like the Lord's just teaching me lately through his word, just to enjoy like connecting with him, um, and wanting to enjoy his presence. Um, which I think I just, I need to be reminded of, I think, especially in this season, like, um, just think we're going through a lot of changes as a family. Um, Rob's kind of in the midst of a new position ministry wise. And I mean, you know, toddler life is ever changing. Um, and as a family, we've been navigating, my dad got diagnosed with Alzheimer's, um, semi recently. And so while my heart's been kind of at, at a chaotic spot at times, it's a good reminder, just where our steadiness comes from, like going to his word and, um, yeah, lately just that idea of his presence that he really highlights uh, throughout his word has been really cool. So mm. yeah, that's a little bit of what God's teaching me. That's awesome. Well, thank you so much for sharing all that. I just love sure. hearing from you. And I know I, I told you this earlier, but just throughout the years since I've known you, I feel like you always have, you know, shared little tidbits of wisdom that have really spoken to me and taught me a lot. So I appreciate you coming on here and talking to you. <laughs> yeah. Oh, good. Well, I'm glad you were able to share some things with our listeners and um, thanks so much. I'll talk yeah, to you later. for sure. Sounds good. See you guys. Bye. Bye. Thank you for tuning into this week's episode of Sparkle Speak. I want to thank the team at Life Audio for their partnership as always. If you go to lifeaudio.com, you can find dozens of other faith-centered podcasts in their network about prayer, Bible study, parenting, and lots more. And as always, you can find us at sparklefaith.com. And feel free to send us your faith story. You can find that in the form on our description. That's all for now, and I hope your week is filled with the sparkle we all need. Miracles are everywhere. Let our adventure begin! Discover Pure Flix, your premium streaming service where faith and family values come home. Ready to have some fun? The most exclusive selection of quality, wholesome movies and series that will uplift your spirit. A man can argue whether God exists, but when he looks at his daughters, he knows. With new arrivals every week. Unbelievable. Save big and enjoy the possibilities, like invitations to exclusive theatrical screenings. I see it, so I believe it. Find out more by joining today at pureflix.com. You're invited to take a vacation from everybody else's vacation to a place where you can explore cypress swamps and magical gardens and see a 65-foot waterfall that once powered an old mill that you can walk through today or just float along the cool, rushing waters of an old-fashioned swimming hole. See the places and plan your journey at visitmississippi.org slash outdooradventure. Mississippi. Wanderers welcome.